Hi, and welcome to DCO Graphic Studio. This was a fun exercise that I created for the holidays. And so if you're a beginner, this would be perfect for you. I go over some basic steps and I think it would be a fun way to learn doing this exercise. In these videos, I show the process for creating architectural and 3D designs using Rhino and Grasshopper. So if you're an architect, student, or anyone that wants to learn how this program works, make sure to subscribe for future content. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments below. I will also be sharing the script on my site, capettydavid.com. So the first thing that we are going to need is to bring in a point. And so to bring in a point, I like to bring in the construct point component to bring in a point in the X, Y, and Z, but we can also create it in 2D inside of Rhino and bring it in. So this is why I also like to plug it into the point component. This way I can always unplug this holding down control and then right click and set one point out here or set multiple points, right? Um, so we can create a grid and then insert all the grid points into here and then it'll create all the objects that we're going to create today. So now that we have this, Let's get started with creating the basic geometry. Starting from a point, now everything that will spring from a point will be starting with the different movements off of this logic. So let's plug in the points into the geometry and let's move it in the X direction. I'll give the factor a number, so I'll say 60. And this is going to determine one of the lines that I'm going to create for, for the, the design. So now that we have these two line, these two points, we can create a line between those two. So I like to create, bring in the line, create a line between two points. Now we can plug in the start and end point. So with this, uh, the next thing is going to be to create kind of those angled lines that progressively get smaller and there's different ways of doing this uh, so if you find a different way or if you find something that's a little bit more simple uh, let me know so uh, to create this line segment sorry I had a quick interruption with this line segment let's create the next one so we're going to take that same initial point and we're going to move it we're going to move this in the X direction again so we can kind of copy this. So control C and control V, or I like to slide it and hold alt. And I do that fairly quickly. So it kind of creates a copy and you can save a little bit of time. Um, we don't want this motion X. We actually want an, a um, actually we do initially. We don't want to move it fully 60. We want to do it a little bit less. Now that we have that, let's take this point and move it again, but we're going to move it in an angle that is diagonal. So let's bring in the move component again and bring in a vector. So to move this in a specific motion, we're going to bring in a vector or vector X, Y, Z. And now let's plug in the vector into the motion. And now we can plug in a value for the X, Y, and Z. We're only going to use the X and Y for this one. So I'll copy this slider and plug that both into the X and Y. And you'll see that it kind of creates this 45 degree angle. We can increase or decrease this. So now that we have this, let's create a line between these two. So we'll create a line between this start and end point. The next part is going to be now that we see that we have that portion of the line, let's create two more copies to the right. So we're going to take this and move it again in the X direction. And now we can move the line in the unit X and bring in a value of 
or a slider. Cool. So now we've created this. And now we also want to move the point this way. We can scale it relative to that, or later on we can plug this into a endpoint. So there's two, there's different ways of kind of achieving that. So what we can do is now take this, copy it again, move this one again, and now basically moving it twice using the same vector, and that kind of adds it twice. Now there's there are different ways of doing this next portion, which is going to be to take these and bring in the endpoint of each one of those. The endpoint of this one, endpoint of this one, and an endpoint of this one. Because now we're going to want to get the start point of each and every one of these and the start point of every one of these and scale them down a little bit. So technically, we only need this one and this one because we don't only want to scale these up so now we can take this and bring in a scale component and scale it relative to the start point and this line with so the geometry and the start point is going to be the center and the factor is going to be bigger than one so 1.3 And we're going to do the same thing for the next one. So I'll just delete this, copy this down, use this as the curve, and this as the geometry. And the 1.3 gets an addition. So we don't have to use two sliders to do that. We can do plus 0.3. We'll do a plus or an addition. So this kind of ties it together in the sense that we can change the location. We can change the scale, this 1.3 then now getting a little bit smaller this one getting larger and then here adding by how much the last one so 1.4 is going to be the factor and then plus 0.3 which we could add to make it larger here at the end now it's not necessary uh, there's, like I said, there are many different ways of creating this. So let's kind of bring this out here. Now, the next portion is going to be to take these and put them all together into a curve component because we now need to mirror that to the other side. So we'll take this, this one, and this one. We'll disable the preview on everything else. And now we can mirror this. So let's go to mirror. And it's going to ask for a mirror plane. So for this, we're going to want to either extrude something or let's see if there's mirror curve. So geometry, curve, and tangent. So this is the one that we we're going to want. The other one is more for surfaces. Geometry is going to be this one. The curve is going to be this initial line, which will basically mirror that and give us that look. Okay. Now here at the end, we'll bring in a polygon and plug this point into the plane. And let's give it a radius of like 2.5. And we can actually do that to the initial point also. 
So it's just both of these. And actually, this polygon, I would create two because the one at the end might be bigger than the other one. So let me show you what I would do. Polygon again, just to show you. Now with the polygon, we're going to be plugged into the initial point. Now we can plug this into the radius. And now we can do this again to this other point. So I'll copy this down. And this may be larger. And this may be a little bit smaller. And if the location of these is not correct, With that being said, this is these are lines and this is an actual shape. So the idea is going to be to turn these into actual shapes. Um, <laughs> there are different ways of doing this. So let's go and show you kind of the approach on this one. We'll go to curve. And we'll take this and plug both of those into this one. Next thing is do it the okay. If they're all going to be the same thickness, we would all do do the same to all of them. So we need this line also. All right. So the approach I decided to take was uh, to take these and then offset them to each side and lock them together. So we're going to offset, curve, in positive and negative direction. So we'll say, um, you know, 1.50. And then copy this again, and then bring in a negative component and do negative 1.50. Now we can take those two and loft together so loft a and b and we've created kind of some surfaces there along with these two that are going to be surface so we'll go here to boundary surfaces or actually we don't need to do that because we're going to use region union and we're going to join in this one this one and all of these other surfaces that we lofted together. Now let's flatten the input and let's disable the preview on all of this, including this lofted surfaces and these down here. Lastly, let's see if we can actually increase some of the polygon size here and let's lower some of this and let's also go here to rendered view so we can see it now that we take this we can now use something called fillet curves and we can round off the edges by plugging the result into the curve and into the radius 1.50 And disable the preview here so we can kind of soften that a little bit play a little bit you know more parametrically with this give it a little bit more um, control so with this being said what we've created is a module or a block or a um, overall design that this can be at a different angle right so if we have this is going to be create the vector is going to say which way right we can the vector can also go in the opposite direction but these are some of the cool things that we can do parametrically here now let's continue on and take this and rotate 
this geometry relative to our initial point. So remember, everything is kind of started off of this initial point, which will go into the plane. Now, to rotate it and to create a pattern, we're going to use the series component and to create copies and array them around a center point. We have the center point located. Now we need the angle. Now the angle is going to be divisions of 360. So by bringing in a panel, so quotation marks, 360, this is how many degrees in a circle. Now if we divide that circle, bringing in a division by six or six subdivisions, we can now subdivide 360 by six and give us a step value that we can plug in and a number value. So the number is going to be by how many you divide it by. And this will give us a value. Now, here under angle, you can either go to degrees or you can bring in a degrees component to change radians uh, into degrees or degrees into radians. So it's actually going to be radians that we want. So degrees into radians, and this can be plugged into the angle, right? Or you can plug in the series straight into the angle and change it to degrees. This way we can add more and kind of create that pattern, right? So depending on how many, six is kind of the typical one that I see. And that gives us the array that we're looking for. Now we can take all of those together and once again, use region union and flatten the input and see that now we have that result of it being together using here boundary surfaces. So this is where it gets a little bit fun is now that we've, we've kind of moved it around and stuff, we can play around with what this would look like. And sometimes, quite honestly, it's better just to keep it without uniting it or without putting it together at the end. And then you can use the region union here at the end. This way, you can actually visualize it no matter what before trying to put it all together. Let me show you what I mean. Now we can. Play around with some of these values a little bit more. And I'll go here and plug those into this one and then flatten the input. And in that instance, it's not working. Um, sometimes it is because it's rounding off the edges. So let's see if. So we'll do this extrude and then we'll extrude it, give it some thickness. Let's see if we can union. Solid union. And this is what that looks like as a solid. And then to get rid of those creases there, if you don't want them, we can do merge all faces. So now we can take this and bake it. And I'll show, uh, I'll kind of create a few iterations here and show you.
That one looks cool. Now I'll bake it. Here's the thing. I'm disabling the preview and enabling the preview again. This way you can kind of visualize things a little bit better. Um, the radius of this. Trying to see if here at some of these can be larger in the sense that it might look better if instead of 20, if it's something like 50. Maybe this one could be a little bit larger. This is one that I haven't played around with, is the array. So these are going to be the iterations that I'm going to be creating for the material. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys saw in my last tutorial, I like to use this website called CG Assets or Ambient CG, and they have a bunch of different materials and they're all really high quality. Um, so if you want to learn how to use PBR materials and high quality materials, I can show you for Rhino, V-Ray, um, and for the most part, all the other programs are gonna be very similar. So I'll see which one of these materials I'll apply to the render here. It might be just a generic one, but hopefully you found that useful. I'll have the script available on the site. Um, this year I'll have it free. Next year I might have um, more of a paid subscription, but thank you very much for being here. I appreciate you guys uh, watching the videos. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, let me know. This is more of a themed one, I guess, for um, the holiday season. So. Um, I hope to see you next time and thank you for watching. Thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you next time.